Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss a new cosmological model that's maybe just a little bit different from a lot of other models we've discussed in the past. And that's because this time it's trying to explain the universe by changing our definition of space-time completely. Instead of having three dimensions of space and one dimension of time, here this model introduces three dimensions of time along with the three dimensions of space. But intriguingly, instead of being just a mathematical framework, there's also an intriguing application to fundamental physics, and even a potential way to experimentally test this in the future. Which is why I wanted to talk about this, because there's maybe something intriguing going on here after all. And so let's talk about this new study by Gunther Kletechka of University of Alaska, and his idea behind three-dimensional time. But first, briefly, I guess, just a bit of history. Because for over a century now, ever since some of the first propositions by Einstein, researchers mostly focused on this idea of space-time being three dimensions of space, represented with the xyz axis, and a single dimension of time that we often refer to as the arrow of time. And together these four dimensions form what's known as the space-time. The mathematical model that fuses the dimension of space and the one dimension of time into the four-dimensional continuum. Something that sometimes is difficult to imagine, but something that for the past few decades has been thoroughly investigated and confirmed through a lot of different experiments. You can check out some of the previous videos on the Einsteinian principles in the description. And in general, the conventional definition of space-time so far has been pretty good at explaining pretty much everything we see. And so even though prior to 1900s, the assumption was that the universe was three-dimensional, by proving that the universe was at least four-dimensional, or basically it contained space-time, and by proving most of the concepts in the special theory of relativity, this provided enough evidence to suggest that there's at least four dimensions. But naturally, in modern physics, there were still a few mysteries. For example, the mystery of this unifying theory of everything. As in, we still don't have a theory that explains both gravity and a lot of effects from particle physics, along with the quantum physics. Which is why for the past few decades there's also been a lot of work on trying to unify everything, because at the moment quantum physics and Einsteinian principles seem to be almost entirely separated. But in this new work, Gunther Kletechka that you see hugging a cactus right here, and whose website you can find in the description, made an intriguing assumption. Well, if we have three dimensions of space, why can't we have three dimensions of time as well? And here we're talking about actual physical dimensions, defining the fabric of the universe. But he didn't just make this assumption, he also created a mathematical model. A model that assumes time also has three axes, and in which particles and different types of forces seem to interact in three-dimensional structure of time. And though obviously it's kind of difficult to imagine, in essence, just like stuff interacts in three dimensions in space, here the assumption is that different forces and different particles interact in three dimensions of time, with the three scales being the quantum scale, interaction scale, and the cosmological scale. And one of the main reasons why this study is maybe a little bit exciting is because it also makes a really intriguing proposition. When you apply this model to various fundamental particles, it surprisingly can actually reproduce some of the known properties, such as for example, mass. And so for example, when you look at the standard model of physics, things like for example electrons, muons, and quarks are known to possess certain mass, but their exact mass is not entirely known. And also there is no exact explanation for why they have such masses. Like for example, some quarks are much more heavier than other quarks, and it's not clear why. But strangely enough, in this model, some of the masses for different particles, such as tau and muon, seem to have values that match the masses of particles that have been calculated over the years. Which is actually super intriguing, but is also explained by the author in a very simple way. In a lot of previously proposed multidimensional time models, the time dimensions were often mathematical constructs without concrete explanations or even experimental connections. Here though, according to the author, the three-dimensional space seems to actually arise as a result of three-dimensional time. Or just to rephrase this, the 3D time is not just mathematical, it seems to physically construct the space which emerges as a kind of a secondary manifestation as a result of time itself. So time makes space, 
not the other way around. With this mathematical model providing a physically testable theory and multiple predictions that could be tested. For example, the predictions in terms of particle masses. So let's just take the mass of the top quark. Here it predicts it to be 173.21 giga electron volts, which surprisingly is very close to the value of 173.2 that's been measured over the years. And more importantly, this model predicts the mass of neutrino, which actually has not been accurately measured yet. But here the model does not just predict the mass of the neutrino, it also finds a kind of a particle resonance depending on their type. But the reason this model seems to make these predictions is because of very specific values and equations derived by this three-dimensional time geometry. With these equations then determining the allowed mass for various particles. And actually producing a very intriguing relationship between various particles. For example, electron, muon and tau have a very specific fixed mass ratio. In this case the ratio is 1 to 4.5 to 21 which at least for now seems to match some of the observations. And so it's really the three-dimensional time that seems to produce the fabric of everything as opposed to space that we observe afterwards. And here the author makes the comparison with some kind of a painting. The canvas is the three-dimensional time, the paint on the canvas is what you get afterwards once the time dimensions have been established. Although naturally this is not the first time such a proposition has been made. These multiple dimensions actually exist in a lot of cosmological models, and the most famous one is of course the string theory. Or to be more exact, one of the branches referred to as the F theory. Here, 12 dimensions of space-time do contain 2 dimensions of time. But string theory has not been proven yet, and also contains a lot of challenges of its own. Although a much more well-known theory of multiple dimensions of time is by Ichak Bars, the Turkish-American researcher that proposed 2T physics, or the physics of two time dimensions, that tries to unify a lot of theories as well. But in a lot of these previously proposed ideas, there has always been a bit of a concern. In previous models, the cause-effect relationship very often created a lot of problems. Or essentially when you have multiple time dimensions, it sometimes leads to the phenomenon of cause and effect basically switching places. Something very similar happens in the Einsteinian principles when you introduce the idea behind faster than light travel. But in this case, these three dimensions of time are maybe slightly different. For example, one dimension of time introduces the arrow of time that's familiar to us, but the second axis that's essentially crossing it is somewhat similar to what we expect from quantum physics. And so here you can actually cross the regular time and possibly end up in a slightly different version of the same day. So I guess in some sense very similar to the multiple worlds idea from the quantum physics. Or you can think of this as parallel universes. And so these alternative outcomes represent the second dimension, with the third dimension basically being the idea behind transition between these times. And obviously all of this does sound very counterintuitive and super hypothetical, but according to the researcher, in some sense, a lot of this should be manifested in many high energy environments, such as obviously the early universe and some of the most extreme particle colliders. So there's obviously maybe a way to test this. And so here this might provide us with a very important clue to the model known as quantum gravity. Or basically the bridge between Einsteinian principles and quantum physics. Helping us unite the fundamental forces of nature and helping us understand what actually forms gravity, electromagnetism, strong and weak nuclear forces. But once again one of the main reasons this idea seems to be kind of exciting is because of its ability to predict masses of certain particles. Since it's able to predict the masses of neutrinos, if one day we discover that the masses are actually kind of similar to the prediction, it might be worth taking a look at this once again. And this would obviously hint that maybe the world is not four-dimensional, but at least six-dimensional. But naturally this idea is not without criticisms. For example, one of the main criticisms of these time-dimension propositions was by Max Tegmark, a Swedish physicist who essentially argues that with more than one time dimension, it becomes extremely difficult to predict the behavior of physical systems, especially when using modern mathematical models. And more importantly, according to Dr. Tagmark, in such a universe, it would be impossible for intelligent life to form. Mostly because the protons and electrons would probably be unstable and very likely decay into particles with a lot more mass than is currently possible. And so the only way such a multidimensional universe could potentially emerge 
is if the conditions are extremely low in energy, or basically if there's very low temperature. Likewise, a lot of other physicists have usually criticized these extra-dimensional theories for being too philosophical and for basically lacking experimental evidence or even a way to test the evidence. And so because many models would be difficult to test experimentally, they were always seen as nothing more than a philosophical proposition. But according to Kletechka, or the author of this study, since there are at least a few testable predictions, it does make this model just a little bit more intriguing. For example, apart from the particle masses, it also actually predicts the speed of gravitational waves. And so according to this proposition, gravitational waves should actually have a slightly slower speed than the speed of light. It's a very, very small difference, but if we're talking about distances in billions of light years, it does become testable. Nevertheless, practical challenges of verifying these predictions do remain significant. But one of the biggest criticisms for these multidimensional models, or multidimensional time models, is just the fact that we might not need these dimensions to explain the modern universe. Based on modern cosmology, this added complexity is maybe not entirely justified, because four-dimensional spacetime is very successful at explaining an extremely vast range of phenomena. And so by increasing mathematical complexity of dimensions, we actually might not be getting more solutions, but instead end up with more problems. And so at least for now, most cosmologists believe that these types of multiple dimension models don't provide substantial improvement over previous four-dimensional attempts, which generally explain almost everything, except for a few things we're still working on. Nevertheless, I still wanted to talk about this because those few predictions this model makes are kind of exciting, and so it'll be interesting to see where all of this goes. But we're probably not going to know any more about this until someone else finds some kind of a counter evidence, or until someone else expands on this and makes this into an actual cosmological model that suddenly explains a lot more. And so until these future discoveries or future explanations, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, Support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and a few more things. Maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership where you get early access and some other videos. Or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.